Good morning, everyone. Today on Good Morning Maine, authorities are working to identify a man's body that was discovered in the Penobscot River over the weekend. Plus, new data shows Maine could be in for more damaging storms. And people all around the state have been remembering heroic firefighters for the sacrifices they've made. We'll have the story coming up. Good morning, everyone. I'm Craig Colson. Emma Smith has the week off. We thank you for joining us. We'll also hear from the organizers of the upcoming um, Bangor Marathon and a Half. The inaugural run, the inaugural run will take place next month. We'll tell you everything you need to know about that. But first, to check on the forecast, and it looks like we'll have a just a chance of sprinkles today before things start to brighten up as the day rolls along. Tomorrow looks great. Nice sunny day on the way. Let's check in with Devin Biggs for a first look at our forecast. And thank you very much, Craig. Happy Monday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's artist trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All righty, areas of dense fog developing out there this morning from near Bar Harbor to Waterville, Augusta, areas further off through the west. Very hit and miss in a few spots, so keep that in mind this morning. You might encounter a few areas of reduced visibility for a little while, as well as a few sprinkles. We had a little bit of rain last night. I think most of the rain is tapered off for now. However, they'll have clouds this morning along with a few sprinkles becoming partly cloudy as we head towards the afternoon period. So we will be switching over to some sunshine after a little bit of precipitation that we saw earlier this morning. Still a little bit of development. So again, at least during the morning period today, at least a few sprinkles or light rain showers. But again, this afternoon, we'll switch over to a partly cloudy sky. So it's the clouds and the sprinkles this morning by this afternoon becoming partly cloudy. And just a few passing clouds coming up later on tonight. Maybe a few areas of dense fog developing yet again. Again, as for the winds, though, not too bad out of the southwest for a bit at around 5 miles per hour, maybe up to 10 miles per hour at best. Winds still not bad by tonight, but by tomorrow, not too bad either, but still some gusts tomorrow reaching up to 25 miles per hour at times. For today, middle 60s, partly cloudy, some morning sprinkles possible, and at south wind getting up to around 5 to 10 miles per hour at times. Your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period showing a few morning rain showers becoming partly to mostly cloudy during the afternoon period. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig? All right. Thank you, Devin. We'll see you later on. Well, we start with some sad news this morning. A family fishing on the Penobscot River made a terrible discovery on Sunday. They found the body of a man and contacted authorities. According to the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office, the county's communication center received a report about a deceased individual in the river off of the main road in, in um, along the Penobscot at around 2.15 yesterday up in Greenbush. The Sheriff's Office, the Maine Warden Service, the state police all responding to the scene and recovering that man's body from the water. The body has since been taken to the office of the medical examiner down in Augusta, where they'll try to determine a cause of death along with his identity. No more information is going to officially be released until they answer some of those questions. Meanwhile, one person is dead following a motorcycle crash in Bitterford. According to the state police, troopers responded to the area of mile marker 32 southbound on the main turnpike just before 6.30 p.m. on Friday. An initial investigation shows that 21-year-old Zachary Swain of Connecticut struck a guardrail and was ejected from his bike when exiting on a curved off-ramp. He was pronounced dead on the scene by rescue personnel. A man was sent to the hospital after reportedly crashing into a building in Milford just before midnight on Saturday. According to the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office, deputies responded and discovered that 52-year-old Wayne Fierro failed to negotiate a turn and struck a vacant building on the main road. You can see the result. The car came to a stop halfway inside that building with debris scattered all around. Deputies determined that Fierro had been drinking alcohol before the accident. He's now charged with operating under the influence. Investigators continue to search for the cause of a bad fire in Waterville. Five people have been displaced following a fire that broke out late Friday night. According to the Waterville Fire Department, crews responded to a front place building just before midnight for a reported structure fire. They say fire was heavy upon arrival, showing from three sides of that building. The cause of the blaze is still under investigation. The displaced tenants are now being helped by the Red Cross. A series of storms in December and early January caused flooding and widespread damage to inland and coastal parts of our state. Now, data from climate scientists and meteorologists say those storms are likely to happen more frequently in the future. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard spoke with the group behind the study to learn more about the situation. 
And what this do, does is kind of give you a broad overview of where we are with climate change and where things are at. Jen Brady, a senior data analyst for the nonprofit group Climate Central, is talking about data from the fifth National Climate Assessment, a congressionally mandated effort of federal agencies to collect data on our current climate and where the data suggests we may be heading. So what we just did was, you know, just kind of try to tell the story of why this might be happening. Um, why are we seeing precipitation increases in certain places and what does that mean? According to the study, between 1958 and 2021, the frequency of extreme rainfall days surged by 60%. Scientists attribute this trend to the capacity of warmer air to hold 4% more water vapor for every degree increase in temperature. So we know it's getting warmer. That's clear as well. And so what's happening then is the atmosphere is able to hold more water. And then it's coming down faster, quicker, in a shorter period of time. Brady says this means we will continue to see storms like we saw in December and January that caused widespread inland flooding and damaged our coastal communities. Based on the fact that we know the temperatures are going to continue to rise, um, it will continue. This is an extreme rainfall. So this just isn't, you know, we might get our flat flowers watered more frequently. It's going to come and it's going to come kind of heavy and hard and probably cause flooding and other things like that. To view the full report, you can visit our website. In Augusta, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, Maine lost 23 people last year due to illness and injuries related to their workplace. According to the Maine Department of Labor, this year's death toll is slightly above the roughly 20 work-related deaths recorded in 2022. Laura Fortman, the commissioner of the Maine Department of Labor, says this number also includes three of the 18 people killed during the Lewiston mass shooting. They were on the job at the time. In a statement, Fortman said, quote, we mourn each of the lives lost. We reflect on their impact that their loss has had on their families and communities. And we recommit ourselves to our duty to protect the workers of Maine. Safety is everyone's business and everyone deserves to go home to their families at the end of the workday. Northern Light Health will be closing its clinic in Southwest Harbor. That news comes to a shock to some of the many locals who say they've been going to that facility for their entire lives. We spoke with some of them to hear their story. I'm a bit disappointed because I've been going to the uh, medical center here in Southwest Harbor since I was four years old. This is going to be a hardship for the uh, Southwest Harbor community. That was a surprise for me. Northern Light Maine Coast Hospital is relocating and combining its Southwest Harbor Clinic with its larger primary care practice in Ellsworth. In a statement, a Northern Light spokesperson cited several reasons for the closure, saying in part, quote, because of continued staffing challenges and the high cost of facility maintenance and improvements, combining our current Southwest Harbor services with Ellsworth makes the most sense. End quote. However, area resident Jeffrey Porter says he's concerned the closing of the facility will make it more difficult for locals to visit with their primary care providers. Well, can you imagine what's going to happen if my guys have to go to the doctors and they got to go to Ellsworth or I go in, in the summertime? You might as well call it a whole day. And I'm not going to get back till after that, until after it. Quote, look, look at what happens. <laughs> that traffic can't get on, on or off this island in the summer. And as an amputee, he says he's worried about making the drive himself. When I started driving by myself after, after everything started healing, I had to pull over and wait if I drove by myself because my foot hurt so much. A Northern Light Health representative says patients will be contacted to help transition their care. And all nine staff employed in Southwest Harbor have been offered positions at the new location or elsewhere. Services and staff will officially be relocated to the facility on Resort Way in Ellsworth on August 30th. In Southwest Harbor, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. There are approximately 100 illegal marijuana growing operations that have been identified operating here in Maine. That's according to U.S. Attorney Darcy McElwee, who issued a statement on Friday. McElwee says the success of collaborative efforts with local law enforcement is evident since more than 40 of those operations have already been shut down and multiple arrests have been made just over the past few months. She says the possibility that organized criminal enterprises with alleged ties to China are using main properties to profit from unlicensed marijuana operations. She says it's clear and there is a need for a strong, sustained federal, state and local effort to shut down and investigate those operations. To date, McElwee says there is no evidence of illegal immigration or human trafficking associated with those illicit marijuana grows. 
National Fallen Firefighters Memorial Weekend was observed over the past couple of days. Our Callie Warren spoke with some local firefighters to learn more about the people being remembered and about the sacrifices they made to keep others safe. People are suffering and have been suffering for quite a long time. We're losing firefighters. Just over a year ago, Bangor firefighter Jacob Madden died in the line of duty. He's one of several firefighters the Bangor Fire Department is remembering on National Fallen Firefighters Memorial Weekend, which honors those who died in the line of duty and from causes related to serving, including cardiac events, cancer, and suicide. Firefighters we spoke with say Madden struggled with depression, and they say they hope to see more transparency and support around mental health for first responders. The worst moments in people's lives we are there and we're sharing that with them and we bring it home with us. We try to take care of each other. Uh, we talk about things and a lot of us go to therapy after. Um, that mental health piece is very important. It's often not spoken about. There's still a little bit of shame to it. Governor Janet Mills ordered flags at half staff on Sunday to honor firefighters killed or injured as a result of their work. We go to people's worst days, you know, and, and we're proud of that because, you know, we're trained to handle those situations and but at the same time, um, it, it's important for the, the public to remember, like, they typically, I say typically, go through, you know, one to two traumatic events in a lifetime while we go through numerous in a shift. Visit our website at foxbangor.com for more information on mental health resources. In Bangor, Callie Warren, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. And the time now is 8-12. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, it was a big weekend for college students all around the state. We'll take a look at some of the graduations and other activities as they begin a new chapter in their lives. But first, another check of our forecast. Not a bad day ahead at all. Partly cloudy, just the chance of a few sprinkles this morning. Then things will be brightening up. The highs will be around 65 degrees. Partly cloudy overnight with lows dropping down to the lower 40s. Tomorrow, a partly cloudy and breezy day with highs near 71. Going to be a little taste of summer almost. More news when we come back. Make your boating experience even better with a Shoremaster boat lift from Hammond Lumber Company. One of the best choices you can make to protect your boat and maintain your boating lifestyle. A Shoremaster boat lift makes cleaning your boat easier and provides more convenient access too. Hammond Lumber has all the accessories you need from lighting packages and canopies to motor systems, including Shoremaster's exclusive Whisper Winch. Take your boating experience to the next level with a Shoremaster boat lift from Hammond Lumber Company. What do heavy rain, extreme heat, and flying lumber all have in common? They're just a few of the things we use to test our replacement windows. At Renewal by Anderson, we put our windows through the worst because your home deserves the best. Renewal by Anderson Acclaim Custom Replacement Windows. Call or visit us online today to get some incredible savings. Affordable financing, too. Hey, Red Sox fans. You've got to play You Pick'em Red Sox at foxbangor.com. Local weekly winners receive prizes from Chase's Family Restaurant and Hideaway Lounge or from Chick-fil-A. Register now at foxbangor.com. You Pick'em Red Sox is sponsored by Blind Faith Tattoo Bangor, KNM Auto Holden, Old Town Redemption Center, and Twin City Tile Brewer. A Blue Hill entrepreneur is as passionate about upcycling as she is about reducing pollution. And so at 20 years old, for something that felt this special to come around for me, I absolutely jumped on it. We'll introduce you to the owner of Ebb and Flow tonight on Fox 22 News at 10. I'm just a cleaning lady. She's clearly much more than that. The Cleaning Lady, all new Tuesdays on Fox. Welcome back, everyone. Quirk Subaru stepped up for two local nonprofits. The dealership's annual Share the Love event raised $41,000 that came from a $250 donation for every car they sold. $23,500 went to the Bangor Symphony Orchestra. $17,500 was donated to the Bangor Humane Society. Both organizations say it's donations like the ones they received on Friday that make the work they do possible. Well, ticket sales don't cover all of the costs that we have, so donations are a big part of any nonprofit. 
all of our support comes from local donors, local businesses who support the mission of these local charities. Um, without that support, we would not be able to do our life-saving work. Car buyers were allowed to choose which of the two nonprofits Quirk donated to from their purchase. Definitely much needed donations that help to keep those organizations thriving here in our community. Hudson University students celebrated an academic milestone over the weekend. Our Kelly Warren was there to capture the moment. Take a look at this. Over 700 students graduated from Hudson University on Saturday. The 125th Hudson commencement took place at Bangor's Cross Insurance Center, where thousands cheered on graduates. Retired U.S. Army Staff Sergeant Travis Mills, a quadriplegic amputee and veteran advocate, delivered the commencement address and received an honorary Ph.D. in public service for his nonprofit work. You know, today is a closing chapter for you, graduates. You learned a lot, made some lifelong friends, and have some of the best years of your life. But now, as you walk across stage to get your diploma, you are going into a world to make it a better place. As students reflect on their time at Hassan, they also look forward to the journey ahead. I feel really good, really relieved. I accepted a position already, so I know where I'm going to work, and I'm just really excited to start that. This has been amazing. Some of the best years of my life, really. And as the ceremony came to a close, alumni encouraged students to look back on their time at the school in the years to come. Remember the experience that you've had here and take it with you throughout your life. In Bangor, Callie Warren, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Now, turning now to the southern end of our state, a conservation area in Wyndham has been in the works for more than two years now and is finally coming to life. Asia Reed with that story. 700 acres of protected land, featuring eight miles of trails in Wyndham, were unveiled Saturday. Nearly 100 bikers, hikers, and members of the public excited to finally explore. Town manager Barry Tibbetts says this conservation project has been in the works for nearly two years. It's really a universal um, opening for people to get out, get healthy, and to spend some time in nature. This area is connected to an existing preserve in Wyndham and Falmouth. It totals over 2,000 acres of hiking trails, biking trails, snowmobile trails, and there are various horse trails and also some ATV trails in here. Tibbet says this should lead to economic growth. Trails are a vital component to the state's $3 billion outdoor recreation economy. Outdoor enthusiast Mark Morrison says it's a huge aspect of the state. We're not from Maine. That's why we came here. That's why we chose to live here, raise our families. This project came together after Wyndham leaders in the Presumpscot Regional Land Trust Fund brought it to land for Maine's future. This land is now one of the largest conservation areas in southern Maine. It's going to be here forever. Uh, and come out and enjoy it any time of the year. And that was Callie Warren reporting. Meanwhile, Maine's own Julia Gagnon made her latest American Idol appearance last night on ABC7. It was a great run, and people all across the state are very proud. The 22-year-old from Cumberland advanced to the top seven last week with her rendition of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. She was back in the spotlight last night when she performed a Dell song called Set Fire to the Rain. The singer has been making headlines ever since her Idol audition originally aired back in March, telling us last month that the support from her family, people all across the state, and the nation have all been great. Well, unfortunately, Gagnon did not advance to the top five last night, but still a tremendous achievement for her, and a lot of people have been rooting her for her and are very proud of her today. We look forward to seeing what she does next in her career. Just an amazing singer, amazing talent. All right, the time now, 819, coming up after the break. Some young Herman students are getting an early start on considering their future careers. We'll tell you about that. Plus, all the latest fireworks from the campaign trail, where the presidential candidates are now neck and neck as they head toward Election Day. More Good Morning Maine right after this. Transform your surroundings with Paramount Paving, located in Bangor. They are your paving and seal coating experts. Whether it's residential maintenance to full commercial projects, Paramount Paving delivers quality that lasts. 
Book before June 1st and enjoy a $250 Visa gift card upon completion of your next paving project. Call us today at 602-8931 or visit us at ParamountPavingLLC.com. Paramount Paving, setting the standard for excellence. When it comes to paving, we are Paramount. An official message from Medicare. A new law is helping us save more money on prescription drugs. Maybe you can save too. With Medicare's Extra Health Program, our drug premiums are zero and our out-of-pocket costs are low. I enrolled and I'm saving money. If you're single and make less than $23,000 a year or are a married couple making less than $31,000, you may qualify and save. Even if you don't think you qualify, it pays to find out. Go to ssa.gov slash extra help. Mesothelioma is more than a ravaging illness. It is a disease that can ruin a family's finances and is never the victim's fault. The law offices of Joe Bornstein has been fighting and winning for Maine families for nearly 50 years, and we've collected over $500 million for injured Mainers. If you or a loved one is a victim of mesothelioma or asbestos-related lung cancer, call Joe today for a free case evaluation and to learn about your family's legal rights. Dial 207-CALL-JOE or online at joebornstein.com. Oversharing can be spiritual. Name someone you had a romantic dream about. My minister. Praise the Lord, Pastor. It can be loving. You love to plant a big wet kiss on Steve Harvey's what? Lips. <laughs> Your lips ain't big enough for these lips. It can be wet. Name someone who has touched your bare body. The pool guy. Overshare with Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 22. Fifth graders at Herman Middle School spent some time thinking about their future career opportunities. Students participated in the Junior Achievement Program, which is designed to spark interest in how the economy works and to encourage students to think about their futures. The program was led by a team of volunteers who used games, simulations, and discussions to connect with students about workforce readiness. It's not much longer before they are starting to deal with real world issues and we want them to know what those real world issues might be. And ultimately we want them to just explore the options that they have. Um, we don't want them just to think that they're pinholed into one thing. We want them to recognize that there's quite a few things that they can do in life. Because you need to know how you're going you're gonna to be an adult. You need to know how to get jobs and stuff like that. All right. The program also highlighted some other essential skills for any job, including communication, teamwork, and problem solving. Good for them. All right, the time now is 822. Time to get another check of that full weather forecast. Here's Devin. All righty, Craig, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. Already, wave heights a little bit active after this morning at around four feet, according to the buoys right nearby. Despite that, though, we have no advisories in effect along the coast or on land, at least at this time. Now, we do have some areas of dense fog that have been developing out there this morning from near Bar Harbor to Waterville, Augusta, just to name a few spots, though, very hit and miss with regards to the fog this morning. So I encountered just a little bit of that as you move forward that will be fizzling out throughout the day. Now, we have been watching for a few rain showers that have been passing through last night into parts of this morning. Notice, though, the clouds, for the most part, the thicker clouds are getting out of here. We may have some more clouds still this morning and maybe a few sprinkles or light rain showers, but we will be transitioning to a partly cloudy sky moving forward. This system here is going to stay to our south as it tracks off towards the east. Our next system later on this week that we'll have to watch out for is actually near parts of Colorado for the time being, so it doesn't look like too much just yet, but later on this week, that'll start to move in our direction. Future cast moving forward for today, we have clouds, maybe some morning fog, a few light rain showers or sprinkles. We get that out of here during the afternoon period, becoming partly cloudy. Notice though, a few clouds moving in later on tonight, maybe some areas of dense fog. As we head towards tomorrow, a lot of sunshine, maybe a few passing clouds during the afternoon period, and then again by Tuesday night, maybe a few passing clouds, and it looks to be about it there. But meanwhile, though, as we talk about the gusty winds. Not much of anything to say with the winds. Maybe a few gusts up to 15 miles per hour further down to the south. Most of the wind will stay off to the north for today and maybe a little bit for tonight. But for tomorrow, most of us will get on the gusty winds again. That could reach up to 20 to even 25 miles per hour at times. Average high temperature is 63 degrees. We'll be mid 60s today. Lower 70s for your Tuesday. Lower 60s Wednesday. Upper 50s for your Thursday. Middle 50s Friday. Upper 50s Saturday. And we're back in the lower 60s again as we head towards your Sunday. Your forecast coming up for today. 
today, middle 60s, partly cloudy overall. Some morning sprinkles or light rain showers, and a south wind getting up to around 5 to 10 miles per hour at times. By tonight, lower 40s, partly cloudy with a light and variable wind. As we head towards tomorrow, lower 70s, partly cloudy and breezy. Northwest wind getting up to around 25 miles per hour at times. Let's check out your extended forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation. Rain showers on Wednesday with highs in the low 60s. A small chance for rain showers Thursday, otherwise mostly cloudy. Highs in the upper 50s, middle 50s Friday with a chance for rain showers. Are you experiencing foot pain? Comfort Shoes and More has a team of experts trained in pet orthics to help you find relief. They offer tailored fittings, shoe modifications, customized orthotics, and much more for the ordinary or for the hard to fit foot with fashionable and functional footwear from today's top brands Hoka, Brooks, Keen, Teva, Taos, Ufus, and Birkenstocks. From running to walking, casual or dress, they have it all. Take the drive to Newport for a sit and fit to find your perfect fit. You and your feet will be glad you did. In 10 years, Lisa Schneider will have an amazing second act, thanks to career reskilling courses from AARP to help make sure her income lives as long as she does. The younger you are, the more you need AARP. Noah's Ark Food and Ice Cream is open for business. Located five miles off exit 244 in Medway, you will find affordable prices on all of your favorites. We offer homemade pizza, mouth-watering cheeseburgers, lobster rolls, scallops, and the local favorite is our sweet sausage sub. We also have kid-friendly meals and offer fresh doughboys and ice cream year-round. Noah's Ark Food and Ice Cream. Stop by for a delicious bite to eat and dessert too. Jumpstart the 2024 ATV season at the Maine ATV UTV Expo, May 17th through the 19th at the Cross Insurance Center in Bangor. No other event features a gathering of so many trail riding enthusiasts, product manufacturers, dealers, and industry service providers. While there, check out Chin Pond Village, Northern Maine's premier outdoor recreational resort with hundreds of miles of ATV trails right from your doorstep. And Doors Equipment, see them at the Expo or at 1468 Hammond Street, Bangor for Kubota sales and service. Sheldon and Missy face off in <laughs> Book Smarts versus Street Smarts. I'm not feeling so good. Oh, biohazard! Biohazard! Young Sheldon. Weekdays at 4 on Fox 22. Welcome back, everyone. Now to the race for the White House. Former President Donald Trump reportedly comparing the Justice Department to the Nazi Gestapo in remarks over the weekend at a major Republican retreat. The Biden campaign quick to react, calling Trump's reported comments despicable and insulting. This, as a new ABC News Ipsos poll, shows the two candidates neck and neck. ABC's M. Wynn has more from Washington. This morning, the presidential race tightening, now less than six months away from the November election. Former President Trump this weekend at a multi-day Republican retreat, reportedly mocking some state and federal prosecutors handling his criminal cases. In an audio recording obtained by the Washington Post, Trump also allegedly compared himself to Al Capone, an infamous mobster, and Biden's administration to Nazi secret police. The White House quick to slam those reported remarks, saying in a statement, instead of echoing the appalling rhetoric of fascists, lunching with neo-Nazis, and fanning debunked conspiracy theories that have cost brave police officers their lives. President Biden is bringing the American people together around our shared democratic values. Also at the retreat, major donor and top Republicans, including a slew of Trump's closest allies whose names have been floated as VP hopefuls. Former presidential candidate Senator Tim Scott telling NBC News. We had no conversations about the VP pick, to be honest with you, to be clear. This comes as a new ABC News Ipsos poll projects uncertainty in the race ahead. Trump with a slight edge at 46 percent over President Biden at 44 percent. But if you hone in just on registered voters or likely voters, you actually get the opposite result and a few point edge for Joe Biden. And for personal favorability, Biden seen as more honest and trustworthy, leading Trump 40 to 33 percent. Yet both candidates seen as more unfavorable than not. Among top issues for voters, abortion access. President Biden with a 12-point lead over Trump on the issue. The ex-president continuing to avoid specific positions, instead deferring to the states on the issue. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. 
Historic flooding in Texas. The rain may have stopped, but the rivers are still rising. And there's a new weather threat today up in the north. Parts of southeast Texas received two feet of rain in just a matter of days. The area from Beaumont to College Station seeing 800% of its normal rainfall. A five-year-old boy was killed when his family's vehicle was swept from a roadway by rushing water. More than 200 people have also been rescued so far in Harris County. Outside Houston, this uh, man and his three dogs were saved by police on jet skis in water that was 10 feet deep. The storms have passed for now, but local rivers could be swollen for days. And now the attention turns to the Plains states, which are bracing for possible tornadoes today from Oklahoma all the way to Nebraska. Well, some breaking news overnight. What could be a major escalation in the Middle East? This morning, Israeli Israel is warning people to evacuate the city of Rafah, which could signal a ground offensive is now imminent. The U.S. and world leaders have long discouraged an Israeli offensive because of concerns about civilian casualties. But Hamas has claimed responsibility for a deadly attack in that area in just the past 24 hours. ABC's M. Wynn also has that story. Breaking overnight, Israeli military officials urging Palestinians to evacuate parts of the southern Gaza city of Rafah ahead of an expected ground offensive by Israeli forces into the city, where more than a million civilians have sought shelter during the war. It comes just hours after Hamas claimed responsibility for a rocket attack at Gaza's southern border, at one of the few crossings where humanitarian aid enters the territory. Three Israeli soldiers were reportedly killed. Prime Minister Netanyahu has vowed to enter Rafah to flush out Hamas fighters, defying international pressure, including from the U.S. All of this has hopes for a ceasefire and hostage deal fade. Netanyahu lashing out at other world leaders, saying... No amount of pressure will stop Israel from defending itself. Hamas's negotiating team leaving Cairo for Qatar with CIA director Bill Burns, one of the key mediators. It feels like the U.S. and allies are in a final push to try and force a hostage and ceasefire deal. The website Axios reports the Biden administration has paused a shipment of U.S.-made ammunition to Israel. The decision reportedly made last week, leaving Israel scrambling. But the reason behind the decision unclear. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. There's also word that the government there has shut down the Al Jazeera news network, raiding its offices, calling the Qatari broadcaster an incitement channel. Al Jazeera called it a criminal action and insisted it follows professional media standards. All right, coming up on the second half of the broadcast, uh, UMaine students, among those getting ready for their next chapter in their lives, we'll hear about that as they also graduated over the weekend. Plus, we'll hear about the, the upcoming Bangor Marathon, the inaugural run taking place next month. We'll tell you everything you need to know about it as Good Morning Maine continues. Come bowl a few games here at Bangor Brewer Bowling Lanes. We're one of the only Candlepin Bowling Alley Centers in Maine. Conveniently located in the heart of Brewer, you always have the opportunity to simply bowl for fun. However, you can also join a league. We have youth leagues, adult and senior leagues. Now don't forget, we also host birthday parties for under $100, and gift certificates are also available. Give us a call right away at 989-3798 to make reservations for your birthday party today. There's a way to cut your dishwashing time by 50%. Try Dawn Power Wash Dish Spray. It removes 99% of grease and grime in half the time. It cleans so well, you can replace multiple cleaning products. Try Dawn Power Wash. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, chances are you have a lot of questions. Norm Prouty has answers. Learn some tips and tricks and explore some beautiful new homes on the market. The Norm Prouty and Danelle Baker Real Estate Show, Sunday mornings at 8.30 on Fox 22. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Today is Monday, May 6th, 2024. This is also National Nurses Week. Whether they're assisting with a life-threatening crisis in the emergency room or delivering babies, nurses perform some of the most difficult and heartbreaking tasks in the medical world. This special week honors their contributions and sacrifices and reminds us to thank the medical professionals who help to keep us healthy. It's celebrated from today, which is actually National Nurses Day, to May 12th, which was the birth date of celebrated nurse 
Florence Nightingale. So if you know a nurse, give them a pat on the back. I don't know what we do without them. By the way, Dunkin Donuts also offering local nurses free coffee. So all they have to do is show up in the drive through or at the counter and tell them that you're a nurse and they'll give you a free hot or iced coffee and send you on their way. No questions asked. Just a way to say thank you. All right, time for some history. On this day in history, back in 1840, the world's very first adhesive postage stamp was issued. It happened over in, the, in Great Britain. In 1915, Babe Ruth hit his first major league home run while playing for the Boston Red Sox. In 1937, the German passenger airship Hindenburg erupted into a fireball while attempting to land in New Jersey. Static electricity ignited the airship's flammable fabric skin killing 35 of the 97 people on board. In 1940, The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction on this date. In 1954, 25-year-old British medical student Roger Bannister cracked track and field's most famous barrier. He broke the four-minute mile mark during a meet in Oxford with a time of just over three minutes and 59 seconds. In 1960, President Eisenhower signed the Civil Rights Act of 1960. It established federal inspection of local voter registration polls and also introduced penalties for anyone who obstructed another person's attempt to register to vote. And in 2004, the final episode of Friends appeared on television and was seen by more than 52 million viewers. It was the fifth most watched TV finale in U.S. history. All right, for birthdays today, we have a lot of guys. Actors uh, George Clooney is 63 years old today. TV personality Tom Bergeron is 69. And singer Bob Seger is 79 years old today. He's still out there touring around and sharing his music with new generations of listeners these many years later. We'd like to wish them all a very happy birthday. Well, if they were in Maine today, they'd have a pretty nice day, starting off a bit on the cloudy side, but things should be brightening up as we head through the day. Tomorrow looks like a spectacular day, even warmer. Let's turn things back over to Devin Biggs for a look at our forecast. And thank you very much, Craig. Happy Monday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. Already, areas of dense fog developing out there this morning from near Bar Harbor to Waterville, Augusta, areas further off for the west. Very hit and miss in a few spots, so keep that in mind this morning. You might encounter a few areas of reduced visibility for a little while, as well as a few sprinkles. We had a little bit of rain last night. I think most of the rain is tapered off for now. However, they'll have clouds this morning along with a few sprinkles becoming partly cloudy as we head towards the afternoon period. So we will be switching over to some sunshine after a little bit of precipitation that we saw earlier this morning. Still a little bit of development. So again, at least during the morning period today, at least a few sprinkles or light rain showers. But again, this afternoon, we'll switch over to a partly cloudy sky. So it's the clouds and the sprinkles this morning by this afternoon becoming partly cloudy. And just a few passing clouds coming up later on tonight. Maybe a few areas of dense fog developing yet again. Again, as for the winds, though, not too bad out of the southwest for a bit at around 5 miles per hour, maybe up to 10 miles per hour at best. Winds still not bad by tonight, but by tomorrow, not too bad either, but still some gusts tomorrow reaching up to 25 miles per hour at times. For today, middle 60s, partly cloudy, some morning sprinkles possible, and at south wind getting up to around 5 to 10 miles per hour at times. Your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period showing a few morning rain showers becoming partly to mostly cloudy during the afternoon period. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s. Your full five day forecast is coming up, Craig. All right, thank you very much, Devin. Well, it was a big day on UMaine's campus Friday as students packed their bags to leave for the summer, while others donned their caps and gowns for graduation. I believe they had three ceremonies in all. Our Doug Banks takes us there. It's, it's been a long ride, but I'm glad it's almost over. Also really sad to see it go. Many students on the University of Maine's campus on Friday expressed conflicting emotions like this. It's really stressful getting towards the end of it. Um, so getting back down home and seeing the family and everybody is going to be um, really incredible. Underclassmen at Hart Hall packed their bags and left their home away from home. I think I'm going to miss most just the people. Others put the finishing touches on an important chapter in their life. Friends embraced for photos all around campus and even waited for their name to scroll up on the Morse Field screen. It's nice to get together with your friends and, and do a nice big photo shoot and it's like your last hurrah. UMaine's Vice President of Student Life describes this day as bittersweet and complicated. You wouldn't believe you know, the stories to be told. A lot of excitement, 
a lot of trepidation, a lot of emotion, uh, but really, uh, I, I just think just a wonderful time in life. Students on Friday reminisced about how far they've come while looking towards the horizon and how far they'll go. And as one chapter ends on Friday, their next one begins anew. It's daunting, you know, to think about. But, I mean, that's what I've been working for. So I think, I think I'm prepared for it, but I guess we'll see. In Orno, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. And we'd once again like to wish all the graduates over the weekend a, a very sincere congratulations, including our own Keenan. Hi, Keenan. He's running the camera for us this morning, one of the many graduates at UMaine. All right, when we come back, Tyler Cruz, all the day sports news. We'll also hear from the organizers of the upcoming Bangor Marathon. Don't go away. If you're worried about fraud or identity theft, Enjoy peace of mind knowing that your finances are safe and secure at a Maine credit union. Start protecting yourself today at maincreditunions.org. Fires, floods, burst pipes, disasters happen, but the mess they leave behind doesn't have to last. For 40 years, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration has been there to help Mainers get back to the closest to normal as they can. When your property is at its worst, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration is at their best. And they have been for four decades. Put your trust in the Bouchard team. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Commercial vehicles can be dangerous and they usually carry big insurance policies. So whether you're hurt by a landscaping truck like this, a work van like this, or a big rig like this, we know commercial vehicle accidents and we know how to get you the big money you may deserve. If any commercial vehicle hurts you, call the twos. We win for you. Hurt by a commercial vehicle, call the twos. We win for you. Call 222-2222. The Lucerne Inn and Ryan's Pub is world renowned for beautiful dining with a delicious view, featuring award-winning dishes from their executive chef, Arturo Montes. It's a true destination dining experience. Relax and Unwind in an intimate space with your loved ones, family, and friends. We are pet friendly, so your furry friends are always welcome to join you at your table on the deck. Whether it's a special occasion or any occasion, the Lucerne Inn is the perfect choice for your business or family gathering. Do you come to a credit union to work because you actually feel like helping people? You get to be a part of really life-changing moments. It builds a really rewarding professional career. And that's why I like credit unions. It could change the course of their lives forever. Oh, you are a gift. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Let's start out on the diamond. Foxcroft Academy Baseball is out to their best start in a long time at 6-0. And as our Ryan Sudal reports, the Ponies are riding their bats and their young core. Good to start hot. All that matters is we can carry that winning percentage in the playoffs. The sky's the limit, I'd say, for this team. No matter where things end up, to start a season, Foxcroft Academy baseball hasn't been this good in a long time. It feels great. We've always known that we're a great pitching and fielding team. The past couple games, we've worked on our hitting, and now that we've mastered that, we're on the roll. The Ponies are 6-0 and to start 2024, and those bats have played a huge part, averaging north of 10 runs per game. They're being more aggressive at the plate, you know, looking for their pitch to hit earlier in the count. Anytime that you're not batting with two strikes on you, you're kind of in more in control if you're at bat. But even with those numbers, they still want more. We've left a lot of runners out there. Big game was Orno. We had no outs, bases loaded, and things like that. We can't can't let runs go like that. Regardless, what's helping define the Ponies' performance this year are the underclassmen carrying a whole lot of the load on both sides of the ball. It's a good feeling. Uh, brings a good energy. When you're mixed amongst classes, you're not heavily weighing too much on, on seniors. We feel good about the now, but we feel pretty good about the future as well. And even though Foxcroft is now in Class C after being in Class B for years, their start has little to do with that switch up. Pitching for the most part is actually pretty similar. There's a lot of good pitching in Class C this year. There is definitely a change in velocity and hitters being able to hit velocity too but for the most part, it's still baseball. As the schedule and their Class C competition gets tougher, the Ponies believe that if they just keep playing baseball, 
they can make some noise. We have the roster talent um, and the depth to, to uh, be a playoff contender. We've got to continue to stick to our fundamentals, and if we do that, then we'll be in pretty good position. In Dover Foxcroft, I'm Ryan Sudall, ABC7, Fox 22 Sports. Thanks for that, Ryan. The Ponies winning in 17 innings on Saturday to improve to 6-0. A thriller there. Let's stay on the diamond now. The story of the Red Sox season has been the pitching staff. An under 3.0 team ERA is the best in the majors as of Saturday, and that staff looks to get just a bit better in the near future. After being placed on the injured list in April for a lat issue, Brian Bayo began throwing off a mound recently and will make a rehab start in Portland with the Sea Dogs on Tuesday. The dogs are scheduled to play Binghamton at Hadlock Field starting at 6 p.m. And if all goes well and he just needs one rehab start, normal rest five days would put him back in the Red Sox rotation as early as May 12th. All right, let's go to the high school lacrosse field now. A big one over in Brewer on Saturday morning. Let's roll those highlights. The Oxford Hills Vikings taking on Hamden Academy Brewer and Herman Co-op on Saturday morning. First quarter game tied at one. Vikings with it. McKinley Soren gets right to the doorstep and dumps it home. Vikings take a 2-1 to one lead. 3-1 to one now. HAB looking to get back in it. That's Brewer's Ainsley Goodwin gets to her spot and rips one home, which is down one. Second quarter, it's 4-2 to two now, and here is Goodwin again with a full head of steam. She gets in close and scores again. Now it is to 4-3, and now it's going to be Hamden's Olivia Veeves. She gets inside. She's going to make a nice move here, and she bounces one home, too. That's going to tie it at 4, but Oxford Hills would put their foot down. Sage Winslow getting downfield in a hurry, finds Mallory Kenna. She scores. Vikings go on to win after a big second half, 20-5. Let's go to the court now. The Celtics back at the Arbeck Center for practice this weekend as they prepare for round two of the NBA playoffs. Boston advancing to the Eastern Conference semifinal round after defeating the Miami Heat in five games in round one. Their only loss coming in game two where Miami set a franchise record 23 made three pointers in that game. Now the Celtics will wait till Tuesday to begin that second round, which is Great news considering the injury to Chris Stapp's Porzingis. Porzingis meeting with reporters for the first time since the injury on Saturday and saying it wasn't as bad as it looked, but it's not something he wants to push. I'm getting better every day, so uh, in a good mood today and, and every day, I would say. But uh, of course, it sucks uh, to be out and not be able to play with my guys, but but doing what I can now to come back as soon as possible. I'm doing everything I can to like speed it up because I want to be back out there as soon as possible. But understanding that you know, it's the worst thing would be like probably to re aggravate that, you know. All right, and lastly, it was finally time to play ball in Herman on Saturday morning as Herman Little League hosted their annual opening day event. Hundreds showed up to support Herman Little Leaguers and almost 400 kids took the field at 9 a.m. to signify the start of Little League baseball and softball seasons. Maine State Trooper and Little League coach Taylor Dube sang the national anthem to kick the day off and then the ceremonial first pitch was thrown out by town manager Josh Berry to his son Russell. Overall, Herman had 420 athletes enroll in Little League baseball and softball this season. That's a new record for a league that plans to keep growing. It's the highest we've had. That's a lot of kids out here playing. Uh, so we, it's nice to be able to invest in all the fields and time, effort that goes into making such a beautiful field over there, and we'll continue to grow that over the years. All the time we have for sports, we'll be right back. Taking on New England's extreme conditions, Toyota has more hybrid all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive models than any other brand. No wonder Toyota has sold five times more hybrids than its nearest competitor, like the rugged Tundra Hybrid, available with 437 horsepower and advanced technology. Take on extreme conditions with Toyota's proven hybrid technology. See your New England Toyota dealer, your hybrid all-wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places. Mmm, Planet Oats so creamy and not watery like. Exactly, and unsweetened has zero grams of sugar. And don't forget, it's an excellent source of calcium. Wow, Planet Oat really has it all. You guys are so right. No, you are. No, you are. No, no you, you are. are. <laughs> yeah, you are. 
Jim's Small Engine Snow's Corner Road, Arlington brings years of experience and a large parts inventory to make your engine as good as new. Lawnmowers, chainsaws, rototillers, wood splitters, generators, blowers, trimmers, and power washers will leave Jim's Small Engines fully repaired, shiny clean, and ready to go. Jim's Small Engines is an authorized dealer for these top brands and sells a wide array of used engines as well as new and used parts and accessories. Call Jim's Small Engines at 825-3527, check their website, and like them on Facebook. I'll be honest, by the end of the day, my floors, Yeesh. but who has the time to clean? That's why I love my Swiffer WetJet. It's a quick and easy way to get my floors clean. WetJet absorbs and logs grime deep inside. Look at that. Swiffer WetJet. Watch and win. One word left. Shopping. Uh, shopping cart. Boom. Every weekday. Did you see it, Amanda? <laughs> I'm impressed every time. 25 words or less. Weekdays at 9 on Fox 22. Welcome back, everyone. Well, the excitement continues to build as we get ready for the inaugural run of the new Bangor Marathon and a Half. It's coming up just about a month away. Yeah. Um, we're very happy to have Laura and David McIntyre joining us once again. Uh, you're organizing this whole thing, mm -hmm. and we thought we'd have you in to just see how's it going. You're getting down to the wire here, so to speak. Yes, we yeah. are. We are excited. We have 212 runners from 25 different states coming to Bangor. And Bangor, we need to show our hospitality because if it goes well this year, it could be thousands of people in the future, and that affects all the businesses here in Bangor. So we are excited for the momentum that this race is taking. That's awesome. You guys can look right over here, too. Okay. okay. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> okay. <laughs> I always forget, because people come in here, they know, where do I look, you know? So, so I, I'll tell them where to look. Okay. Um, but uh, right now, you have people coming from all over the world, as you said, yep. uh, different countries. Um, but it takes a lot of people to put these things on. So yep. where are you at now? I, need, you know, I know you need sponsors. You need yep. other volunteers, that sort of thing. So there's a couple things going on. First of all, we want to thank our title sponsor, Bangor mm -hmm. Savings Bank. That is allowing us to give prize money to the marathon. But we also want a prize money for the half marathon, so we're looking for that sponsor. Um, we're looking for volunteers that need to be at intersections where there's traffic mm -hmm. flow. We're working with the police department. Uh, we'd like to have a mobile support unit on the course with water and Gatorade checking on the runners, as well as volunteers at the water stations, just rooting them on. And those water stations can be anywhere on the route. What, what kind of feedback are you getting, David? Are people getting excited about this? They really are. I've been doing yeah. some cold calling, uh, yeah. knocking on doors, and meeting meet a lot of people, meet and greet, and they are just so excited to have an event in Bangor like this. Well, ba Marathon in Bangor, really? Yeah. We're the second largest city in the, in the state of Maine, and people are really uh, excited to have such a wonderful event to uh, you know, to uh, bring some excitement into the city. But yeah. it takes takes help. It takes money to put these things on. Another thing we were talking about earlier is you were hoping to give like a little box of Maine to all these runners, a little. Yeah. Yes, little, I thought it would be yeah. so cool. I called mm -hmm. the guy that yeah. owns Box of Maine, and we just need to find the right sponsor to mm -hmm. partner with us, but to do like a little five or seven item box. Mm -hmm. And every runner would get that. That would be great PR for a small business as well as great main products. Right. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. If people want to take part in this, whether they want to run at it or volunteer, what, what do they do? They can, they can go to our uh, website, which is uh, Lifestyle Global. Well, life. lifestylesportsglobal.com mm -hmm. that's one of them and another way is go to run sign up is the easiest way go to run sign up .com and you can just punch up the great bangor marathon on that on that and you also go to uh, the, our facebook page uh, the great bangor marathon on our facebook page mm -hmm. pretty easy we'll we'll yeah. try to put a link on that to our this story yeah. when we air it later on too yeah. um, and this is going to be yeah. a real bona fide thing and in fact you have a, a veteran runner coming today today to certify the course yes yeah. we have Bob Kennedy coming. He's 76. He's run three marathons in the last month. 76. 76. <laughs> he won his category. Huh. Um, but there's an important thing uh, for USA track and field. A certification and sanctioned event means it is accurately measured mm -hmm. and that way whatever their time is they can submit it to Boston, Chicago, any marathon to qualify. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. And, and if you if we didn't mention it, it's coming up on June 23rd right mm -hmm. here in Bangor. Yeah. So if you're interested, head online um, to sign up, maybe take part in this event. And we hope that this will become even bigger and better in years to come, right? Yeah. 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 And we will see you, you at the, the starting line. line. There you go. Oh, you, got, you guys had that ready. All right. Hey, thanks for coming in this morning. We wish you the best. And we'll check back in with you just before things um, and see if we can give you some more help to get some Thank publicity you. out there. Awesome. Thank right. you so much. We're going to send it back over to Devin for another check of that forecast. <laughs>
All righty, Craig, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All righty, wave heights a little bit active out there this morning at around four feet, according to the buoys right nearby. Despite that, though, we have no advisories in effect along the coast or on land, at least at this time. Now, we do have some areas of dense fog that have been developing out there this morning from near Bar Harbor to Waterville, Augusta, just to name a few spots so very hit and miss with regards to the fog this morning so my encounter does a little bit of that as you move forward that will be fizzling out throughout the day now we have been watching for a few rain showers that have been passing through last night the parts of this morning notice though the clouds for the most part the thicker clouds are getting out of here we may have some more clouds still this morning and maybe a few sprinkles or light rain showers but we will be transitioning to a partly cloudy sky moving forward this system here is going to stay to our south as it tracks off towards the east our next system later on this week that we'll have to watch out for it's actually no part of Colorado for the time being, so it doesn't look like too much just yet. But later on this week, that will start to move in our direction. Future cast moving forward for today. We have clouds, maybe some morning fog, a few light rain showers or sprinkles. We get that out of here during the afternoon period, becoming partly cloudy. Notice though, a few clouds moving in later on tonight, maybe some areas of dense fog. As we head towards tomorrow, a lot of sunshine, maybe a few passing clouds during the afternoon period. And again, by Tuesday night, maybe a few passing clouds. And it looks to be about it there. But meanwhile, though, as we talk about the gusty winds. Not much of anything to say with the winds. Maybe a few gusts up to 50 miles per hour further down to the south. Most of the wind will stay off to the north for today and maybe a little bit for tonight. But for tomorrow, most of us will get on the gusty winds again. That could reach up to 20 to even 25 miles per hour at times. Average high temperature is 63 degrees. We'll do mid 60s today. Lower 70s for a Tuesday. Lower 60s Wednesday. Upper 50s for a Thursday. Middle 50s Friday. Upper 50s Saturday. And we're back in the lower 60s again as we head towards your Sunday. Your forecast coming up for today. Today, middle 60s, partly cloudy overall. Some morning sprinkles or light rain showers. And that south wind getting up to around 5 to 10 miles per hour at times. By tonight, lower 40s, partly cloudy with a light and variable wind. As we head towards tomorrow, lower 70s, partly cloudy and breezy. Northwest wind getting up to around 25 miles per hour at times. Let's check out your extended forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation. Rain showers on Wednesday with highs in the low 60s. A small chance for rain showers Thursday, otherwise mostly cloudy. Highs in the upper 50s, middle 50s Friday with a chance for rain showers. I got hurt by a big truck. Why did I call the twos? Because life-changing injuries deserve life-changing money, and I'll fight to get it for you. We got a client who broke multiple bones in a commercial vehicle accident, $700,000. Another client had a brain injury, and we got them $1.15 million. If you get hurt by a big truck, call the twos. We win for you. Hurt by a big truck? Call the twos. We win for you. I'm adding Downy Unstoppables to my wash. Now I'll be smelling fresh all day long. Still fresh. Mm, so fresh. Get six times longer lasting freshness plus odor protection. Try for under $5. For taking on New England's extreme conditions, Toyota has more hybrid all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive models than any other brand. No wonder Toyota has sold five times more hybrids than its nearest competitor, like the 302-horsepower RAV4 Prime Plug-In Hybrid with up to a 600-mile total driving range. Take on extreme conditions with Toyota's proven hybrid technology. See your New England Toyota dealer, your hybrid all-wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places. Ten years from today, Lisa Schneider will become the undisputed leader of a ginormous pack of dogs. Rescue dogs, to be exact. A second act made possible by the career reskilling courses Lisa's already taking now with AARP to help make sure her income lives as long as she does so she can finally run with the big dogs and the small dogs who just think they're big dogs. That's why the younger you are, the more you need AARP. When Electrify Maine wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Electrify Maine provides outstanding electrical services to eastern and central Maine. They are a licensed Generac dealer specializing in generator and heat pump installs. Call today for a free estimate. Rex has spent the past five years working for the TSA alongside his handler, Regina Eisenberg, helping to screen travelers before they got to the security checkpoint, sniffing out any explosive devices and baggage. But now he's retiring. He was given a heartwarming send-off at Milwaukee's Mitchell Airport. 
His final assignment, sniffing out a piece of decoy luggage before being showered with tennis balls. And lots of love, of course. He now gets to go home with Regina and just be a regular dog and gets lots of love there as well. Congratulations to him on the end of his career. He's a very good boy. All right, that's it for now, folks. We thank you so much for joining us. All the latest news coming up tonight right here on this channel. But for now, we hope you have a great day.